What's up everyone? Welcome back to Beyond AR TV. My name is John and today we're going to be talking about something unfortunate that's going on right now. Something between two worlds that I didn't necessarily ever see colliding. That is the synth pop band over from the UK churches and then the rapper and singer Chris Brown. These worlds have been brought together thanks to Marshmallow, the DJ that has the marshmallow on his head. The guy that you might recall we just talked about recently because I feel that he makes extremely generic music and he will quite literally work with anyone to make a hit. This was proven once again on the new track Light It Up featuring Chris Brown and Tyga. Now you might recall that Churches collaborated with Marshmallow on a track called Here With Me earlier this year. I didn't quite care for the track all that much, although it was kind of nice to see Churches working their way up the Billboard Hot 100 in the United States. That's something that I didn't necessarily ever see happening. I didn't care for it, but again, I was going to leave it at that. But then, churches took to their social media accounts to put out a statement because obviously they took issue with Marshmello collaborating with Chris Brown and Tyga. We are really upset, confused, and disappointed by Marshmello's choice to work with Tyga and Chris Brown. We like and respect Mello as a person, but working with people who are predators and abusers enables, excuses, and ultimately tactically endorses that behavior. That is not something we can or will stand behind. If you're uninformed and out of the loop on exactly why they would make this statement, Chris Brown in particular, although Tyga has his things too, has a history of domestic violence. You might remember the Rihanna incident. I don't want to go into the graphic detail, but it was absolutely horrible. Now that was over a decade ago at this point, so what's happened in the years that followed since he's changed, as so many fans would say? Well, if Chris Brown fans are saying he's changed, then why do I have this extremely long list of things that Chris has done, been accused of, or has actually been convicted of to actually show you? Why do these incidents keep popping up, and why is he making comments like the ones that we're about to get to if he's such a changed individual? Everybody makes mistakes, but Chris Brown's mistakes always seem to be huge, involve weapons, abuse, or something indirect or direct in this case where he just goes off with his anger flying off the handle and he makes comments that absolutely don't deserve to be heard by anyone. Some of you watching might not know that much about churches as a group. They are a synth pop trio from the UK. Yes, they happen to all be white. I'm not sure why their race keeps being brought into this by Chris Brown and his fans constantly pulling the race card for no reason at all. Churches are a group that have notoriously in the past stood up for important social issues that are things that are on their mind. They're talking about women's rights, they're talking about domestic abuse survivors, and obviously they probably don't have a very good view of Chris Brown before or after this incident. Now, Chris Brown took to the comments of their Instagram page to say, Bunch of losers. These are the type of people I wish walked in front of a speeding bus full of mental patients. Before I can even go any further, how could you ever say that Chris Brown has changed if this is the type of statement that he starts with because they made a respectful statement saying that we still like Marshmallow as a person, we're just confused and hurt by the fact that he's enabling consistent abusers, not somebody who did something a decade ago and moved on, was able to learn their lesson, was able to try to make amends, not that it could ever be made right, but to try to change as a person. He's consistently never done that. And now to say that, oh, he's all about positivity, all the haters are just bringing him down. Churches are in no way haters here. How the hell could that get through your head? How could that be what you understand and take away from this? I don't understand how Chris Brown has a single fan left on this planet, and the fact that he does kind of enrages me. He continued on after that horrible and just kind of traumatizing opening statement that is so awful on so many levels to continue on with keep groveling over your own insecurities and hatred. I'm black and proud, and I know it hurts you guys are struggling with life or peace, so you are forced to see my success. You know things are getting serious when the all caps and the misspelling grammar issues start to come on. I'm black and proud. Chris, what does that have to do 
with anything here. It's pulling the victim card, just like other people like R. Kelly have pulled. It's something that's so detestable and indefensible because you are out here considering the fact that you've done all of these things. You somehow still have the audacity to say that I'm innocent, all of these things. This is coming from the guy that literally mocks somebody who accused him of rape by selling a shirt that said, this bitch lying with a picture of Mona Lisa on it. But he says, so you are forced to see my success in all caps. You aren't even number two. Remember, second place only means you lost first? Ta-ta, good day, peasants. Serious question here. Who has the responsibility over at Team Breezy HQ to jerk off Chris's ego 24-7, 365? Because without that constant enabling of his ego, of the horrible things that he does, the monstrosities that he commits, how would he be able to continue doing these things, saying these things, if he actually felt some sort of remorse or if there was somebody to actually hold him accountable and responsible? Clearly, there is nobody doing that. And the fact that he was so troubled by the fact that the band took to Instagram politely to make a statement saying that they do not condone the fact that Marshmello is collaborating with these people... I'm just drawing a blank here. The problem here is not just with Chris Brown and Team Breezy, the people that he brainwashes with every post that he puts out into the world to think that he's some sort of victim, that all of the attention should go to him, and that people are trying to oppress him because he's a black successful man, not maybe because he's a notorious abuser, somebody who takes advantage of others and has the worst temper and anger management issues that I've probably ever seen in the world of music, but also because of Tyga. Now, you might see that Church has kind of indirectly called him out as well in their post, saying we like and respect Melo as a person, but working with people who are predators and abusers enables. Considering the keyword predators there, I know that they're talking about Tyga, because you might not know this, but he started dating Kylie Jenner when he was 24 years old, and she was, drumroll please, 16 years old. And what is the age of consent in California where this was taking place? 18! The Kardashian family tried to write this one off and say, this is a special circumstance. You don't know Kylie. She's just a very mature young woman. Well, what if a 13-year-old was an exceptional mature young woman? Would that make it okay for Tyga to start dating those women as well? No, they're not women. They're actually girls. They're teenagers and they're underage. And in some states, I will say 16 is the age of consent. But in California, where this took place, like I said, 18 is the age of consent. And Tyga continued dating her, bragging about the fact that she was underage in songs, and they eventually split. But still, did Tyga ever show remorse for this? Should I have a reason to say he made a mistake and he owned up to it? Absolutely not. I mentioned the mindset of the fans, and of course, death threats and horrible sexual things started rolling into Lauren Mayberry and the rest of churches. Things that I don't even want to read, but I need to show you for context. If you do not want to see this, then I will put a timestamp on screen or else in the description down below. Click to that if you don't want to see these messages. Lauren posted some screenshots on Twitter where one user, which she was kind enough to blur out their username considering what they said and all of these people that said things to her, the fact that she still blurred out their name says a lot about her and a lot more negatively about Chris Brown and Tyga's fans, but this message said, Fuck you, motherfucking bitch. Your song with Mello is a big fucking flop. Which, it's actually number 41 on the Billboard Hot 100 right now, so out of every song in existence, it's at number 41 on the Hot 100? Don't know about that one, Chief. But they continued on to say Light It Up will debut number one on the Billboard charts. On the week that me by Taylor Swift and Brendan Urie released? Keep dreaming in this horrible, demented world that you live in where apparently everything is torture. They finished it off with, fuck you, bitch, and then another bitch for good measure. Did that make you feel good, buddy? This next one I cannot even fathom because I can't imagine being a type of person that would ever say this to anyone, whether you were an anonymous account or an actual person. But this person felt so compelled by the fact that Chris Brown, his lord and savior, had made this comment on the church's page that he reached out to Lauren Mayberry to say something so detestable and awful. I hope Tyga rapes you. Then Chris Brown beats the shit out of you, basically admitting that, oh, Chris Brown is an abuser and you're okay with that? You're kind of a fan of it? And then saying, then R. Kelly comes and pisses on your white 
pass. Again, why do we keep pulling the race card here? What does that have to do with anything? Learn to keep Chris Brown's name out of your gutter, trailer, trash, ass mouth, stupid racist white bitch. Where does this kind of internalized hate come from? Who taught you? I want to see your parents because this is a generational thing that continues to get passed down. Hate gives way to hate. The moral of the story, Chris Brown and his horrible, toxic fucking fans are among the worst people on this planet, and maybe they all just need to go to an island together where they can worship Chris day and night and say, hey, come do whatever you want to do with me, because apparently that's what I'm okay with, so I'm enabling it here as well. Tyga, bye to you as well, and Marshmallow, Disappointed, once again, can't say I've ever been a fan, and this new track, Light It Up. I did play it a couple of times. It's not the worst Marshmallow song I've ever heard. I made sure to watch it with an ad block on, though, because can't be passing on any of that money to them. Let me know your thoughts on the whole situation in the comments section down below. I feel like this should be a universal agree that Chris Brown is a horrible human being and deserves probably prison time, and that Lauren Mayberry and the rest of churches did nothing wrong. But let me know in the comments section down below your take on the situation, maybe what you think about Light It Up as well, because I do think the song, while it's, it's catchy, it's a cheap catchy also as well. That's to be expected for a pop, rap, EDM crossover, but it just feels cheap. The lyrics are horrible, the beat is okay, that's the only thing that I can really say for it, but I definitely don't recommend that you listen. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. I'm sorry I might have been a little bit scattered on this one, but it honestly just really gets me angry to see all of these things that are being said by people. I know it's the internet and people will say what they're gonna say, but it's just detestable to see Chris Brown still thriving in 2019. See a couple of recent videos right here. Check me out on social media at the links in the description, and I'll see you soon for more on Beyond AR TV.